What is a tornado? How does one form? This is my explanation. I'm not a scientist, but I've watched many videos, including those made by storm chasers, and read many articles about tornadoes and how they're formed. What I explain here is just my educated opinion. Even many meteorologists, in my opinion, are not sure how tornadoes are found formed. Watch my video and see if it, I do not have the best explanation about how tornadoes are formed. You be the judge. Here we have two fronts colliding, the cold front on the left and the warm front on the right. Notice the slant of the cold front. Cold air settles to its lowest level. Warm air rises. And when they collide, the warm air goes up the face of the cold front and over the top. And the clouds form along the top where the moist air condenses because of the wind chill factor and also the altitude. Cloud development because of frontal lifting of warm moist air. Here we have the warm the cold front pushing into and under the warm front. But it can be it could be the other way around. The cold front may map symbols or these uh, triangles along the face or along that line that represents the cold front. Receding warm front ahead of cold front. That's what we have here. Tornadoes are formed only where the two weather fronts collide. If you're on the lighted side, the lighter side, you'll see it as a white tornado. If you're on the dark side and the cold under the cold, the clouds of the cold front, you see it as a dark tornado. So it depends on whether you're on the Warm front side or the cold front side of what you see, the color of the tornado. Where the warm front and the cold front collide, sometimes called a squall line, is where all tornadoes form. They never form way back in the cold front or way in the warm front, right on, along the place where they collide. The squall, it's called a squall line. In the zone along the face where the front, front collide, the warm, moist air of the warm front mixes with the colder, heavier, and denser air, generating tremendous energy of motion called kinetic energy. This energy is used to create the tornado. The warm, moist air pushes into the face of the cold front, then pushes up and over it. The warm air rises and cold air goes down. We all know that warm air rises and cold air settles, sinks to the lowest level it can find. A simple concept, but very important when trying to understand how a tornado is formed. We have another picture of this. As the warm air rises, containing more moisture than the cold air, it condenses at a high level because of uh, uh, because of the altitude and also because of the wind chill. Warm air can hold more moisture than cold air and it's held there as invisible vapor. You can't see the moisture in the warm front. It's there. It says invisible vapor, which is a gas. The warmer water vapor molecules in the air behind the warm front have more kinetic energy, which causes the water vapor, which is a gas, to expand, creating air pressure. You know, when they talk about the high pressure zone and the low pressure zone, but it's always in the warm front area, behind the warm front where the high pressure is. The water vapor is part of the mixture of gases we call air. Behind a warm front, the air has greater pressure than the air behind a cold front. As I said, the air in a warm front pushes up and over the face of the cold front. The air in the warm front is pushing out in all directions, and when a cold front pushes under it, then it creates a lot, of pre lot more pressure because it's being squeezed by the cold front. Tornado formation, you see that the air is rushing along the ground and into a trough that's created in the face of the cold front. And as it travels, it spins, just like water going down the drain. It spins, it rotates. And it, when it gets to the, to the uh, place where the warm air, is rushing, uh, warm air is rushing up the face of the cold front, it's forming a trough in there, like an invisible trough. Then the warm, moist air rushing into it, it's already spinning goes into it and it spins even more because it 
brush it across it at an angle and pushing against the face of the cold front the warmer moisture air with its greatest, greater pressure can create an invisible trough in the face of the cold, fr cold front it's like a ditch but you can't see it it's invisible because it's a ditch made of air because the cold air is denser and you can actually push a trough into it which is invisible the movement of warm moist air with greater pressure laterally across the face of the cold front, usually at an angle, can create a vertical spin, spin in the invisible trough. Remember, this trough is in the face of the cold front. Although you can't see it, it is there. As the moving air, warm moist air enters the invisible trough it has created in the slanted face of the cold front, it deepens the trough further as it spins vertically. The face of the warm air rushing across the face of the cold front usually at an angle. As it goes up the face of the cold front, it allows more, more moist air to rush in at the bottom where the pressure is greatest. It then rushes up the invisible trough in a spinning motion. This is clockwise in the northern hemisphere because the Coriolis forces rotation. Here we have another picture of the same thing. The rushing warm moist air is going into the invisible trough, then up and over the top of the cold front. It mixes, it mixes with the cold air in the trough as it goes, creating enormous kinetic energy. How, do, how does vapor condense? You see it's a fairly large looking particle, but compared to water vapor, which are molecules, very small. I mean, it's very, uh, yeah, it's very small, but the water molecules are so much more tiny, they look very small here. Because they're actually molecules, not particles. In order for water vapor to condense to form liquid water in tiny droplets and thus become visible, each molecule of water vapor must con come in contact with something colder than itself. This is where the dust particles or smoke particles come in. There are billions of dust or smoke and other particles always floating in the air. This, these solid particles are colder than the molecules of water vapor from a warm front. It's like the water vapor in your room. When it touches a cold glass, it condenses on the side, it runs down the glass and sometimes makes a water spot on your table. Well, these tiny particles floating in the air are cold like that and the water vapor condenses on them become water droplets and eventually become rain, can become rain or snow or sleet or hail. When a water vapor molecule touches a solid particle, it loses heat to the particle and as a result, the molecule, molecular movement slows and the water vapor molecule then, stick, molecule then sticks to the particle. This is how the tornado becomes visible, starting at the coldest part, which is at the top, then the Condensing vapor becomes visible as liquid water droplets farther and farther down the trough. Soon the in entire tornadic funnel becomes visible. As with the glass that is colder than the vapor floating in the air, so these are tiny, uh, also tiny particles like dust and smoke particles floating in the air. They're colder than the water vapor. When one of the molecules touches the colder particle, it stops and clings to the particle, which is, looks like a cloud in the shape of a funnel. Here we have the top of the cloud, which is called the anvil. Then we have the mesocline, which is the middle. Then you have the mid-level wind blowing around in a circle. And you have your low-level wind. Actually, your wind is coming across the face of the earth and hitting the cold front, and then as it hits it, it builds a trough and then it goes up and over and then it goes up and make, makes clouds. Although the tornado actually begins at the ground level as moisture laden air rushes into, into and up the face of the cold front, it looks as if it is coming down from the clouds. But that is only because the condensation process begins at the highest coldest level then works its way down to the ground. So the visibility begins at the top works its way to the, down to the ground, but actually the tornado begins at the ground level. In many ways the tornado is not what it seems to be. What is happening is not what is 
a person might intuitively think is happening. Therefore, it is important to understand the science behind the process. Here we have condensation park, a little black park over there floating around. And a typical raindrop is 2,000, whatever that is, diameter. It has many, many little particles in it because many, many uh, vapor molecules have condensed even on the first, it begins condensing on one little particle, then it becomes many, many mo molecules condense on that molecule, or the yeah, molecule of liquid water. Pretty soon it's a large ma raindrop, it gets so big that the wind can't keep it up there and it falls as rain or some other form of pre precipitation. I don't know what, I don't know what those, uh, those things represent. Liquid water droplets grow, that's what we represent here. It's first the tiny water droplets. A liquid water are carried on the updraft of the rising warm air. But soon the droplets accumulate enough liquid water that the rising air cannot lift them as they fall as precipitation in some form, depending on the temperature. Remember, water vapor is invisible, but the tiny droplets of liquid back. After the water vapor condenses, the droplets continue to grow, becoming more visible as clouds. See how at higher and higher levels the, well, the temperature is colder and it's easier for it to condense. When water vapor becomes invisible, becomes visible, since what the water vapor condenses as it rises into the colder air above the ground, it will condense and become visible as clouds. Wherever the air rushes upwards, as over the face of a cold front, the wind chill increases and the temperature drops quickly, rapidly. As it does, the water vapor condenses at lower and lower levels, becoming visible as liquid water at lower and lower levels until it finally reaches the ground, having the appearance of a funnel cloud. Here yeah, I made a drawing of the trough, the invisible trough. You see the pressure going across the water, the warm air going across the ground collides with a cold front and it finds that trough, goes across the face at an angle, finds that trough and goes up. The trough. Remember that we said that tornadoes form only at the face of a cold front. My theory is that the air rushing over the face of the ground toward the front face of the cold front to go up its face will sometimes create an indentation in the face of the cold front which becomes an invisible trough. Now we're reviewing what we've, uh, what we've talked about before. The rushing warm air going up the trough mixes with the colder air, creating a spinning vortex. And pushing against the face of a cold front, the warmer air can create a vert vertical trough in the face of the cold front as it pushes up and over. You might say it pushes into, then up and over. The warm air moving laterally across the face of the cold front toward the trough will enter the trough and join the air moving up and over the face of the cold front. As the moving air enters the invisible trough, it erodes the face of the front further, deepening the trough and the air moving up the trough spins counterclockwise as it goes up and over the face of the cold front. I believe it's actually clockwise. I think I made a mistake there. You will note that in the previous slide there is a lighter area behind the tornado. You're looking into the, on, into the warm front. The dark area on this side of the tornado is in the cold front. On the next slide, we will take another look. Remember, although it seems counterclockwise, counterintuitive, the air is moving up the trough from the ground or the warm side and up the face of the cold front. It's not coming down from the clouds or from the, yeah, from the clouds. It is the rapid spin of the air at ground level that does the damage in a tornado. The energy for this is the mixing of the warm and cold air 
and extremely low pressure created by the rapidly moving air. Doesn't the tornado come down? But you might say, it looks like, it looks to me as if the funnel is coming down out of the cloud and when we touch the ground, it then becomes a real tornado. It does truly look as if that is what happened. However, what we see as a funnel is developing from the water vapor that is condensing to water droplets beginning at the top of the trough, then continuing to come down to condense at lower and lower levels until it finally reaches the ground. Wind chill plays a big part, part in this process. The cold, more, the cold air is at the highest level. The coldest air is at the highest level. As the air from below moves up and into the cold air, it begins to condense and there be there becomes visible as cloud material. Now what we're doing is actually reviewing what we talked about before. As the rising air gets colder at the, in the trough, it becomes visible as a dark cloud. It is this con condensation of the water vapor becoming liquid drops that we see. This only looks as if the original cloud is what is expanding stretching, making a cloud funnel, and moving downward. It only looks that way, that's not what's really happening. I mean, the visible part is moving down, but starting at the top and the condensation. But the more and more air is coming from the ground up, and as it goes up, it gets colder and colder until it condenses, and then the condensation continues downward as the air, because the wind chill, gets colder and colder at lower and lower levels until it's finally back at the ground. I'm sorry but you have not I'm sorry but if you have not understood my theory by now you probably never will I sound like sour grapes to me I hope I've done a good job of explaining it this is not how a tornado farms just remember that okay the end thanks so much for watching I hope you've enjoyed this and learn something from it, although I don't know if that's going to help you really. What will help you is just watch out for these things and get, warning, get an early warning so you can get out of the way. Okay? Be safe. Don't lose any of you. I value all, all you guys.